good. His grace and the power of his name. And the power of most Christians are weak. They have no power. Don't understand much about God. Make a mockery of God most of the time. So we got to keep going because we got to align what I'm doing for the rest of this time. And even this year, God said, line up with me. Get in line with me now. Get in line with me because you're going to need to be the way I'm going to be doing. There's so way something going on. They got a tanker blocking where, um, where the ships can't even get in with all the supplies. And they're sitting waiting because that canal, I can't think of the name of it. There's a the Suez. Suez Canal that is blocked with a, crate, with a ship. And the rest of the ships can't get in with all the goods and everything to ship to the United States and everything. Girl, boy. You don't know what he's going to do. But he's on the move to get Christians to get ready for the supernatural and have your mind right on what's most important. What's most important is people's souls getting saved. Nothing else is important. Your little thing, what you're doing, what you feel, going to have to cease. Because he wants you to be focused on people being able to get into the eternal kingdom that's coming. That's what he after. He ain't about what you're talking about right now. You got to understand because what he's doing, he's allowing space for repentance right now to get the church first. Now, why you say that, Pastor? Because judgment is going to start at the house of the Lord first. That's what your Bible say. Judgment is going to start here first. You say you know. So then you have to respond like you know, your character, your fruit, whatever you want to call it, got to be in line with the Spirit of God. So you're going to have to go back and readjust. I started this this morning because next Sunday is Resurrecting Sunday, but I want to brief you because I believe God is telling me to go back. And show because we drift after a while. Because that's just human nature. That's why God was consistent by having everybody in the New Testament write the same thing. You don't hear what I'm saying. Everybody got write the same thing. Uh, Matthews, Mark, John. huh? They wrote the same thing, but just with a different point of view. Same account of certain things, but what he's seeing from his point of view. But what God was doing was giving different point of views for us. For we could be able to focus on what the Word is saying. God wants us to know His power. That we got through singing, right? God wants us to know His power. Now, you are dangerous with your own power. So, everybody that comes to the Lord must bear cross. I think some think they're going to get too smart for that. They're going to get out of that. You're going to get yourself into witchcraft, self-will. That's what you're going to get into. If you don't humble yourself, so there's a pattern that he has set already that you must follow for your own good. Because if you don't follow it, you're going to drift out now. Because the flesh man, now I'm... I, Scripture after scripture, you could go to. But you must understand the difference between walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. If there was the same, he didn't have to talk about it. You're going to get saved and you're going to automatically walk in the spirit, right? Nobody that smart. That's the problem. So there's a drifting. So what we did... This morning, and I'm going to follow up now on what we talked about, where perhaps you'll be able to understand your mind is against God. (laughs) You'll learn that. Your mind is not in agreement with God. You don't get it yet. So that's why you could ice out on you. But your mind is totally against what God is saying, all of us. 
why he would say you have to renew your mind. Why would he say you have to put on the mind of Christ if your mind is okay? If you are right. Huh? So first you have to admit about yourself who you are. Or you come in contrary, you fighting God in the beginning. Huh? So the mind going to war against what God has said. Uh, I, I read a scripture this morning uh, um, in Ephesians, I believe. He talks about, I'm trying to go back, uh, that we are against God. Uh, Galatians, when you, huh? Galatians 5.17. Yeah, where the fruit is, exactly. Galatians 5.17, we war against God. Now, just because you say you come to church and you know the Lord, that don't change automatically. Because he does not break nobody's will. He don't make you do nothing you don't want to. Once you make up your mind, go with it. He's not going to do that to you. He's going to let you choose. Now, there's consequences for whatever way you choose. And that's what you have to remember. You can open the door to generation curses, demons from hell. You can open the door to uh, 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 familiar spirits. You do that the way you think. You pick up that same old spirit that kept your grandpa, your, your, uh, uh, <laughs> your mama, <laughs> all them people. You pick them same spirits up if you want. And there you are, right there. You're sitting there with them. Huh? And until you say, uh-uh, this is not the way I even supposed to be thinking as a Christian. That's going to cause me some issues as we go on. Come on, read that. Let me, let me go. Come For the on. flesh lusts against the spirit. Uh -huh. The flesh lusts against the spirit. Going to always do that. Come on. And the spirit against the flesh. Uh-huh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Okay, wait a while. So... Now, I think I read the Easy Bible this morning. I read the Easy Bible, for maybe you could understand, you are not no special privileged character. All come that way. All born that way. The deception is that you're deceived to think you different. Come on. The things that you want to do as weak people are opposite of the things that God's Spirit wants. Now, you are a weak person... Regardless of how strong you think you are, when you compare spiritual with the flesh, you always come out weak. You're weak. You don't know. God said, my ways are not your ways. You don't know how I think, how I want things to go. You don't know how that look. Well, there's a lot of confessing and admitting to get on the page with God. So you got to get on his page now. Come on. Go ahead. The things that God's Spirit wants are the opposite of what we want as Now we you can clip that one phrase out if you ain't learned nothing. That's opposite, child. Now until you line up to recognize I am, and we say it all the time, but do you really mean it? I am my greatest enemy. Nobody else is my enemy better than me. You the, you the woman, you the man, huh? you the boy, the girl, whatever. That's the problem here. Come on, go ahead. Or the opposite of what we want as weak people, our own thoughts fight against what God's Spirit wants us to do. Mm -hmm. As a result, you are not free to do the things that you really want to do. Okay, you, would, you want to do it right. How many dudes get loaded and they cry and cry and cry? They don't want to do that, but they can't help themselves. And they're using their mama money to buy them drugs that they stole out of purse. Hello. But they don't want to keep really doing that. I sat with brothers almost half of my life before I got saved for sure that cried like babies. But then they swear they're not going to go and do that no more. But they turn right back around next weekend and they're right at it again. Now, you say, well, yeah, God delivered me from that. Say, we're going to deliver you from yourself. That's harder. Because many of us have been delivered from drugs, alcohol, nah, nah, nah. The fresh man is the partner. That's him, partner. 
He wants full control over you. What shall a man give to profit the whole world, he says? Huh? Huh? If you, if you get everything, then he loses his soul. But that's going to be the fight. Now, there are many teaching Jesus did it, uh, John and all of them did it, about how desperately wicked that man is, Jeremiah says. But you still don't get him because he's subtle. He's been with you all your life. Huh? You got that? Yeah. But God wants you to receive this power that Jesus came, he suffered and died to give you the power over your flesh, over your mind. But he's not going to make you receive it because you want him to explain everything to all eternity to you. And you don't have the capability of understanding such. But that's what you want. So you're going to lay around, you heard what I said, you're going to lay around all your life talking about I don't understand. His grace is given freely. You're not going to understand everything about what God has done and going to do. God wants you to understand, though, this sacrifice of his son has a purpose to kill you. Self, it won't kill you in your own old set ways and habits that you hold to. You have to be born again. Now, God want this so desperately for you, and I got to go, because that's my point this morning. In Ephesians 1, verse 18, we'll start in verse 18 in the Easy Bible. Uh, actually, we need to read the verse 21, but I'm going to see how far I can go. Go ahead, verse 18. Yes. I pray that your God will bring light into your mind. So Paul said, we pray that God going to bring light into your mind. I know you want all the other stuff and all that going on in your life, but you say you got to get light in your mind. That's what you need. Come on. Go ahead. Then you will understand about the many good things that he has prepared for you. Now, you got a lot of stuff prepared for you, but if you have already stuff prepared for yourself, then you can't get his because you're going to clash with him because his going to bring a, a specific point he's bringing, I see. And each and every one of us, he has to do for you could get his purpose, his will. Come on with me, please. You know that you will receive those things because he has chosen you to be his people. Uh -huh. God has prepared very valuable things for you in heaven. Okay, God already prepared very valuable things for you already. Trying to just talk to you. He's not trying to meet your crying right now. He's trying to talk to you now. Come on. You will also know how very powerful God is. Now, you can also know how powerful he is. Because what, what y'all was just talking about a few moments ago, see, most people don't understand God's power. They think God needs some assistance from them. God don't need you to assist him in nothing. He going to work it, but he going to work it from grace and from love, from long-suffering, from patience. That's what he going to work it from. See, he's not going to work it from, I'm offended. I'm mad, your feelings. You ought to know you out when you get that. Because then now you taking control in your emotions and your feelings. Ain't no love and long suffering and patience and God in that. You don't get it, see? So you're going to go adrift now. Watch him. Come on. He uses that power to help us now as we trust in Christ. Mm -hmm. God's power is greater than anything we could ever know. He used that power to raise Christ so that he became alive again after his death. Then he gave... Now, he used that power to raise Christ. He has to resurrect you. You reacting like your great-grandma and them with some emotional trip, some not being accepted feelings, so that's what you're going to be operating from. Because, see, you got to know you accept it. That's the only way you're going to be able to do anything for the Lord. You accept it by God. Nobody can do me no more than God allowed. 
What you talking about? Even, you ain't going to be smart enough to know everything because you don't know nobody heart. You know, basically, most of y'all don't know everybody in all situations that people. What? You don't know that. How you judge from you. Now, I'm using an example to show you, you in the flesh. That ain't the way he said do that. But you still controlled by your emotions, your feelings, what you think. Everybody quiet now. Come on, let's finish this. Then he gave Christ a place to sit at his right side in uh -huh. heaven. There, Christ rules over every other ruler and leader. He rules over everything else that has authority. He is greater than any power which people respect. That is true for the powers of this world now and also the powers of the world that will come. Okay, in other words, you got to believe all that. That in Christ, everything he said is good. Okay, now let's fast forward. Let's see if that's right when things don't go the way and think the way you feel, the way you think. Let's fast forward then. Let's see. You're going to go right back to your emotional response. The same, either tap something or get depressed and don't say nothing. Or just shut down. Because you you, you're not going to, you remember last Sunday, it was time for worship. It was time for lifting your hands, calling out to the Lord. Huh? This morning when you come in here, that you're supposed to pay your vows every Sunday. When you come in, you're supposed to glorify God, worship God, give him thanks. No, wait, wait. But I got to teach you, some people do that religiously. Ain't nothing changed in them. Ain't nothing changed in their mind. They still feel, think the same way. <laughs> Holy Ghost got that. Ain't nothing really changed. See, because you need to be born again from within. Now, now watch. Now, now, Paul said, I'd like you to understand your mind need to be enlightened to what's going on. If you do not understand that, you set yourself up that you won't receive the power of God. You'll get into a, a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. That's all in your Bible. See, you're going to deny the power. The power to change. See, now, if you don't watch out, and I went to First Peter, because I'm going to speed it up, because some of this I talked about already. I'll go to First Peter 1, verse 5 and verse 6. Verse 5 and verse 6, okay? Let's see. And I'll try to show just a little bit to make it go just a little faster because there's a point I need to get to here. I need to get to a point. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. The manifold temptations. Uh-huh. Come on. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Come on. In other words, he raised Christ from the dead. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in depth for Easter, God said do, because you need to understand the resurrecting power. That's what Easter is about. Because if Christ just died, you dead. The resurrecting power is what you're supposed to recognize to be able to resurrect a dead person, all of us, that we could be able to serve God. You can't serve God in the flesh. You have to slip over into the spirit. But the spirit realm carries different characters, <laughs> different response than that that is not in the spirit. See, so you're going to fool yourself thinking everything all right unless you understand this is a resurrection to resurrect a dead man, a dead woman, that they would become a different person. So maybe some of y'all could be able to see why a lot of churches, there's no change in the people because they are not resurrected. They're just religious. Now, we read 1 Peter 
five and six, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm catching up with my own notes then. All right. Then, if you see that, let's quickly go through this then. Right, quick. Come on. Who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation, uh -huh. ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. You got that? In other words, then, this is what he wants you to have. Not just say I'm a Christian. But he wants you to understand. Come on. If we're going to know an appropriate resurrection power to our lives today, we need to believe to have faith. Perhaps instead of asking, where is the power in the church today, we should be asking, where is the faith in the church today? Where's the trust? In God. That's what faith means, to trust him. Now i got to trust him. What his program that he's already set from the foundation of the world, he already got things set in place. What he going to do? He, <coughs> excuse me. He knew we were going to be here this morning, just like this. He knew that already. Got that. Now, what should we do now, Lord? Okay, now I'm not talking about activities. How should we think right now? I sh what, what state of mind we should be in because we are here with all the stuff going on and, and I told you before, you're going to have some other stuff going on. So you better get your little uh, emotional self together because you're not going to change what God's going to do. So you need to get in line to what God's going to do and demonstrate the power of I trust in him. I have faith in him. Not in what we see, what we feel, what we're going to do. So that means then you're going to have to have a relationship with him, a tight one. Now, but you may not understand how to have a relationship with nobody because you readily will change when you can't get your way. So you don't understand how that goes. See, you cut off after that. See, you start acting different. Huh? Okay, let's see then. Watch. I, I just put, you don't have it? I got it. Okay, do we come. really believe God is who he says he is? Uh-huh. Do you really believe who God say he is? More people don't believe that God is who he say he is. Look how still you're sitting on me. Come on, go ahead. Or do we pick and choose what feels comfortable or is politically correct? <laughs> That's how most people are. That's why I left it there, because maybe you gave what Pastor said. If you feel that person agree, correct with you, then you all in with them, baby. Huh? I hope y'all listening right now. Okay, come on. Do we really believe God can do what he says he has done? Uh-huh. Or do we view certain biblical accounts as mere stories or fables with lessons? So the Bible, you think that's just a story, that's just a fable, that don't have nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Come on. As mere stories or fables with lessons behind them. Uh-huh. But there's lessons behind these stories. There's lessons. They're not just fables. Did y'all get that? So there's lessons behind what Scripture have said to teach us. One of the greatest lessons that you should know dealing with Easter and the resurrection is if Christ was the example for how you should live, Christ pleased the Father. Christ obeyed the Father. But if you're not tuned into that, you think this is just church. This is Biblical examples of how you should react, respond, if you belongs to him. Got that? Okay. Take a little further. Watch. If we perceive the object of our faith as weak, can we really expect to know his incomparably great power and will likely find it hard to endure the hardship that often precedes the display of his power? Now, hardship got to come to see his power. To get miracles, stuff got to happen. You got to be in a hard place. You don't, you running, you want everything to be good. You're not going to, and some of y'all going to go through because as I speak, your mind is somewhere else. 
So some of y'all going to go through because you got to see it literally for yourself. You're going to go through. You are fighting spiritual powers. You are fighting your flesh. He just read that always want to do opposite from what God wants. So you got to understand, he got to be trained. She got to be trained. Uh, Philippians 3, verse 10 and verse 11. Philippians 3, verse 10, verse 11. In other words, it's set that way for spiritual growth. Paul took years writing, sharing, to get them to understand how you going to grow spiritual to be able to obey God. Because God is not going to ask you to go on no picnic. God will going to always be contrary. And it's not going to be easy. And actually, it's going to be dealing with some hostile people. Not people just going to like you. They're not going to like you. They need deliverance. They need salvation. So you're going to have to be able to endure like God endured with us. You ain't favorable to God all the time. Some of y'all just getting that to be favorable halfway to just. Now, if God was like us, God would have been through with you 20, 10 years ago. Some of y'all, 20, 30, you still doing that same cycle. So he'd been through with you because you do not yield readily. But God is long-suffering. And it, what? He expects you to be long-suffering. Verse 10, come on. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Now, be- most people want the first part, the power of his resurrection. The, the door open, somebody leaving in their mind. Because they just want the first part of that. It don't happen. You want to know him and the power of his resurrection because you like the power. And, no, no and, pastor. (laughs) And the fellowship of his suffering. That's where you're going to get the power. When you can go through and trust him, when the wall know that's wrong, know it shouldn't go like that, But when you can go through, and he got a special treat for every one of us to get us to be able to experience it. And you got, you know, you know people fellowship? Ain't no fellowship, and you way up here on the stage sitting by yourself and everybody out there. Fellowship is you uh, sharing, talking, being friendly. That's fellowship. There ain't no fellowship. I don't have but one person here I like. You got a sad fellowship going on. There ain't no fellowship. You are tripping anyway. You know why? Because the scriptures say you're supposed to love those that despitefully use you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. What? I need to come down on the floor. Because the Bible, that's why uh, most people don't want Jesus in the light of being the son of God. Because he fellowshiped. You want to make him God the father, no fellowship. He fellowshiped with people when he walked. So you're going to have to make up your mind, and and most people have, so then they stop right there. Because there's no fellowship. You're not communing because you become selfish then. And I don't see that in God's character. God is not selfish. God is long-suffering, patient. He deal with folks, deal with issues. He don't withdraw and tighten out. Well, yeah, it don't matter. Praise the Lord. Come on, go ahead. Being made conformable unto his death, uh-huh. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And the resurrection of the dead. You want to be resurrected. Huh? Not, not 
Everybody here going to be resurrected, but some going somewhere else. So it's not just that you're going to die and just disappear. Boop, 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 you leaving. Come on, look. That was verse 11. I, I want to go back easy, Bible. I ain't moving. Yes, I want to know Christ better and better. Uh -huh. I want to know the power which God showed when he rose Christ from death. Okay, in other words, that's what you're supposed to want. Now, you say, well, I ain't had interest in that. I just want to go to heaven. Read my lips, you not. Because you're going to reject the very thing that's going to keep you saved. Because just because you accept Jesus, you got to stay saved. Tell you die. Now, it might be all of a sudden, too, because you might think you got that plan when you're going to die. We don't know. So you got to be ready at all times. Come on, go ahead. I got to finish. Come on. I want to have the same kind of troubles that he did. Now, you don't want to read that no more anyway. Nobody want to say you want to have no sin. Paul said, make me. I'm getting hot up here. You might just turn the air on or something. See, nobody going to say that. See, in the flesh. This brother was in the spirit then to even admit such. The natural man not receiving that. Do you get that? But the natural man is against eternal life, spiritual things. Natural man against that. And you got to always know that about yourself. Now, if you take, if you think too highly of yourself right there, mark this old man's word, you're going to have trouble spiritually because you are kicking against the very thing that's written to cause you to grow. Well, amen, one day. Did I get to verse 11? Not yet. Come on. I want to obey God like he did in his death. Then I hope that I also... Whoa, 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 whoa. Christ obeyed God even to death. Do you realize that? Because he didn't have to. He could have backed out of that at any point in the Garden of Gethsemane. He could have quit. But you're going to have to obey God. So... That's the other thing that's missing in the modern-day movement, obedience. Don't obey nobody. If I feel, if I think, I do. You heading the wrong way in this journey. Come on, I'm trying to get to verse 11. Come on. Then I hope that I also will become alive again after death. Uh-huh. Now, I got hope for the resurrection, he says. Now, there's so much built in that, but I got to go. Come on. Now, the difference is in this Mark 9. I left that for myself. The, we shared that man had weak faith. Now, remember, to get this power, you got to trust God. Now, you say, well, I trust God. Mm, all along the way. Today's okay. But let's see if you're going to trust the decision, what he allowed, what he go through tomorrow. Oh, that's the problem. The boy's father had to admit that he didn't have the faith. But if you can do anything, if you remember, he said. He said, can you do, see, that you doubting. Bruh, he do all things. All things he can do. Jesus corrected him by letting him know. If you, Aaron, it's on you, believe in it. You can't trust it, it can't be done. And it's going to have to be according to my will. I ain't just moving mountains around. I ain't just opening up stuff because that's what you want to do. It's going to be according to my plan and what I want. And you done tapped into that, so you ask that. Easy way, but so let's see then. One more, and I'll be ready. Come on. Serving in the power of an almighty God. Uh-huh. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now, most of y'all may be familiar with that scripture. Jesus talking to his disciples, telling them, okay, you don't watch me raise the dead. You don't watch me heal leprosy, all that. But you ain't got no power. You're going to need power before you go tackling them demons, before you're going to be a witness for me. For you're going to be able to a witness for me. Not just saying Jesus loves you, but demonstrating it 
and how you carry yourself, how you live. Huh? Now, there is some things you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be obedient to God. Now, there are many brothers that did this. Y'all familiar with David? I've shared much. Elijah, 1 Kings 18, verse 46, I'm a poor one. Uh, Moses did it. Abraham did it. All were empowered of God to be able to trust God. And all had predicaments. Circumstances came up to see would they be obedient to God. Now, Elijah, in case in point, verse 46, come on. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, mm -hmm. and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now, he was running before him because he fixed the mega prop, uh, prophesied on about some rain, I believe. And it, you fixing to tell these people it's not going to rain for a certain amount of years. I think it was three. Three, three years. Half. Three and a half years. And you're going to have to trust God because that means you ain't getting no water neither. Now, you see, some people want to prophesy this and that, but they don't understand the circumstances you are not going to be exempted from. See, so he had to be able to trust that somehow God must be going to take care of me if this is going to come to pass. Huh? See, you don't realize that you go through. You're going to share in the fellowship of whatever you're going to say. You, they, they got to get it going through you too. Do you see that? Now, but watch, God empowered him to be able to make that predicament that he predicted that that was going to come to pass. Now, now, but wait, and if you flip it here, that's, that's one situation. Uh, you got to look at Abraham and how God promised him he was going to have a son. <sighs> You're almost 100 then. Now, you got to trust God. You're going to have to trust God that God said this, and it's going to come to pass. By the power of God, they're going to have a child at 100 years old. He 100, Sarah almost that age too. But he got to trust God. Now, well, all God had to do is get her pregnant when he said it, right? He waited 25 years trust in God. That ain't for these modern days. You have been trained wrong. So you going to be impatient right quick. Some of y'all ain't moved now. Because you, you don't even understand. That's the way God operates. Now, that don't mean God going to give you 25 years to do what he say. That don't mean that. But he might give you 10. He might give you 15. Ain't nobody saying nothing. See that? Now, God got a plan, and I can't get it all because I want to get to the point here. In Luke 1, verse 37, I'm going to move. I just want to bring that point before I move on. In Luke 1, verse 37, all right, nothing is too hard for God. That's what, what you got to get. Nothing is too hard for God. God is just. God's going to always work everything out for the good, or if you do it, you're going to cause more damage because you don't know the ins and outs. You don't know the, uh, the background of it. I said something else for Sunday school. You don't know the backfield in motion working what God's doing. You think, so that's why you have to trust God. See, not feel God, not be emotional with God, you got to trust it. Now, let me hurry. Go ahead. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible with God. That's what the scriptures say. You got that? His power is not just great, but uh, it's complete. You, you're talking about great. It's complete. 
He, he just ain't doing stuff, boom, boom, like that and showtime for today. God looks in the, back fire, the background, the backfield. That's what's going on with everything. See, it's called wisdom. That's the way God operates. Now, he needs you to be patient. He needs you to wait on him to long suffer with him to see it come to pass. Because, see, you don't know what's going to happen. And those that have children, you will learn the hard way what I'm saying because then you're going to see the effects by what you didn't trust, by what you did. You're going to see it now. You, and, and nobody, I ain't going to tell you you're going to be by yourself. And you're going to, it's going to dawn on you. You're going to, because the Lord do that. And then sometimes the devil do that to bring condemnation on you after. Because of the mistakes you make. Because we all make mistakes. Now you're going to, certain things you should have done, uh, things you shouldn't have done. And then you didn't do it at the right time. Huh? So you need the Spirit of God to lead you where you could be able to flow accordingly. All right? Because he is complete. Now, in Ephesians 1, verse 19, did I get that yet? Yes, sir, we read that. We read that. Okay. All right. Now, all right, Ephesians 3, verse 7. Ephesians 3, verse 7. In other words, it's a fight. So I'm trying to get to the end. You're going to fight with this because of our very nature. Nobody is exempted. So I don't know why some people think that's for some people, but that's not for me. It's for everybody, all us. We go through the same process to get the power of God. Because you're not going to get the power of God with you in the way. Some of y'all don't get it. you in the way. The way he got it laid out. And, and most go in the way. That's more popular. That's more acceptable to the natural way of thinking. So I, I can tell you, you're not going to have many friends like that. I know that. Because you're going to go contrary to the way the natural man think. You got that? Come on. Ephesians 3, verse 7. Yes, sir. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. He said, I, may, I become a minister because I was intellectually smart. <laughs> Because I got this, and I understand that, and I know this, and I know it, I, 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 I sound like your cousin, the devil. I know, I know, I know this. That ain't, Paul said, I ain't what? Easy Bible say what? I tell that good news to other people uh -huh. because God chose me to serve him in that way. That was God's gift to me because he is so kind. God uses his great power to help me in that work. In that work. Come in English. I ain't got that yet. Come in English. Watch. In other words, I, I want to show that Paul come to some realization that, and Paul was one of the few that did, because most people are that experienced, that knowledgeable, don't come to that. But he was one that come to it that, that don't make nothing what I got when it comes to the Spirit of God. Huh? You can't I help him. Come on. I became a servant of the gospel because of the grace that God showed me through the exercise of his power. Uh-huh. Through the exercise of his power. Not because of who I am, but because of who he is. Now, everybody know he all powerful and all great, but you got to admit it. You got to carry yourself that that's why. Because of him. Y'all got that? That's much in that. Because you're fighting spiritual battles, not flesh and blood. So what the devil is going to try to do is trick you. Once you come to the Lord, the rules change. It, it's not the same battle you're in tonight. When you step out to say you're going to do for him, do something for him, the battle change again. You don't get it, see? Ephesians 6, verse 10, see, the battle keeps switching on you. By your mouth, you cause the battle to increase. Because you say certain things 
that you're both bigger than who you are. So now you got to come up to that standard. Oh, you don't want to talk today. You got to come up to that standard because the mouth speak the abundance of the heart. So you saying things with your mouth. So you bringing it now. And every time you say it, you suck, God got to test that. He's going to test that now. Let's see if you know what you're talking about. Huh? Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh -huh. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against you know that scripture. You wrestle, wrestle against spiritual powers. Now, now wait. Now, most of y'all know the armor starts off by got to put on what? The first thing? Huh? Verse 14. Stand uh, therefore having your loins girt about with truth. You got to know the truth first. And what? And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Then you got to have righteousness. So you got to know the truth. Most people don't even, the, the truth has been distorted. The way people teach the word is distorted. They leave out, you're supposed to become like Christ. They don't tell you that. You want to be like Mike or like somebody else. Come on, Elder, go ahead. And your feet shall with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Oh, that's what I wanted to get. Above all, the shield of faith. That's what we talk about. If you don't trust, now, just because you say you got faith don't mean nothing. We're going to find out the Spirit of God going to test you to see if you trust him. With what, Pastor? With your whole life. With your whole destiny plan of life. Uh-huh. Above all, that's what we talk about. And all the rest of the stuff that go with that. Now, we, you got to trust him. You prove if you trust him by responding love, long-suffering, patient. Oh, 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 oh. You see, you're proving it. Now, you, you, don't, you don't want to talk. Now, I don't want to connect that with that. I know you don't. It's supposed to be connected because you prove. Boy, it looked like trying to get me to go blank. The armor proof, see, because you're supposed to have the shield of faith. And then he goes on to say what? To do what? Above all, taking the shield of faith, where uh -huh. you shall be able to quench all the fiery darkness. Now, that's the only way you're going to quench. I don't see nothing else quenching. So, if you got weak faith, like the man said when he asked Jesus a little while ago, I showed you that. And he said, I believe, but help my weak faith. Okay, a lot of y'all believe. But now your faith got to be tested. Every believer in here, now, when you want to move to the next level, your faith must be tested in a greater way. Now, I read something for Sunday school. Your faith going to be tested in your obedience. Can you obey? You say you know certain things, but can you be obedient? The proof is, will you be able to obey it? Well, now, you could get out of the way and don't have to obey nothing, so you, you get no tests. You're not proven. So you're not going to be active. You're not going to be involved. You're not going to be in certain things, so they can't test you. Uh, I'm not going to be fellowshipping with certain people because I don't like to see them come. Oh, yeah, I, I work with some real people, see? Yeah, you got that tell you. We ain't like you. you want, so I, I'm not, I might speak to you. I might. But I just walk and I have nothing else to say. Because you ain't going to never be tested. So you're going to stay in that. Like that. He is. Now, you're going you gonna to need the power. Because mark my word, them same old temptations used to have you. When you get tired... They come back. I, I say it all the time. I say it, many people ain't here. They put a little funny hat on and they come. 
walking back. You're going to need power, my brother, because your flesh ain't going to help you then. Because when, see, cause what's going to happen is God going to test you with it. And that desire and that's uh, uh, going to come so strong. Now, you can write it on your, your paper. He's going to come so strong then, and he's going to take you. Because you avoid and you refuse to believe that you're going to need power. But you refuse to believe how you get it. See, there's a process. All my life with the Lord, there's a process he worked with you. To get you to that point, because you don't have nothing in your, I don't have how smart you think you are, what you can do. That don't mean nothing against them demons. Come on, finish that, read it. Verse 17, uh -huh. and take the helmet of salvation. Now you're going to have the helmet. Now you get knowledge. But that's not the point. Most have knowledge. The spirit is what you're going to need to fight with. Ah, now, I got to go. There was some more there, but I'm not going to stay there because my time ticking away. Then there's a serious fight. Now, those here that, that don't even move you because you don't know you're in a fight. So you even know you're in the fire. You just think just merrily, merrily as we go. So it, it's on. You, man, I don't want to hear all that. I, uh, one day sing or something. You don't even do that. You can't even worship. What's the problem? You're going to enter into a warfare. Now, I'm normally uh, months ahead before things happen anyway. So, but you're going to enter into a warfare now. Because you don't understand certain things, and you ain't going to know what to do. Because you react the same way. Now, beware of this. Come on, go ahead. I got to go. Come Be on. aware, however, that sometimes the path to experiencing his power is marked by suffering. The path to experiencing this power is marked by suffering. And now, with, because you don't want to be obedient, so you got to suffer. Because you're not going to get it unless you go through. Now, watch now. To experience this power, uh, Paul understood this knowledge of Christ. And at Philippians 3, verse 10, he said that. He said that I, I might know him and the power of his resurrection. You don't get the power of the resurrection without getting to know him. But you need to know and share in suffering. Now, now, why you got to go through suffering, Pastor? Because you ain't going to know how you're going to react unless you suffer. They get most people quit when suffering come. When they got to suffer, I don't, ain't nobody cut them. Ain't nobody hit them. Just because we don't agree with you. So they can't suffer that way. They can't suffer different opinions. They can't, they can't say. Now, not, I, I said leave in their mind first. Eventually, the body going to go. But the mind first going to go. Then you're going to, you're going to, because you can't experience whatever trials that God allow you to go through. You can't, you can't take it. You're going to quit. Suffering, because you got to become like Christ. What did Christ do? He didn't turn from his destiny. Suffering, but he stayed and he fulfilled the destiny that God had for him. He stayed with it. He stayed with it. I'm going to Calvary. I got to finish this course. I'm not going to get mad with God and quit. Huh? That's Verse 10, verse 11, for I leave, time ticking away. Come on, verse 11. But if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Uh-huh. Well, we read that already. But do you understand, Paul was so concerned about moving on. I got to go, Elder. Come on. I don't want When your ministry is most marked by struggles and obstacles, don't give up. Uh -huh. You are getting closer to knowing the power of his resurrection. Remember, his power is made perfect in weakness, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Okay, so his now, if the, the, I don't mean to cut you off, but do, do you understand? If when you're going through, 
That means if you don't quit, something great coming out of it. Yeah. Yes. I already know that. See, because that's a test. God going to test you to see if you trust him. Do you trust that God is always right? He's good. Did I get Ephesians 3 verse 16? Because I'm running into each other because I did this for Sunday school. No, we didn't do 316. Ephesians 316. And you have to be reminded. Now, the only danger, and I didn't, I didn't, First, Second Corinthians 12, verse 9, y'all see that my grace is sufficient. Huh? God said, you got to come to, I am all you need. No matter how it feel, what it look like. Boy, that's, that's like breaking a wild horse. And some of y'all don't want to admit that because the natural man don't agree with what I just said. That's like breaking a horse. Because that means you got to go against the grain. Against your very self. So all I'm trying to bring here today. You got to go against how you feel, what you think. And don't make sense to be able to follow God all the way to experience the power of his resurrection. There are many people need to be saved, and they're not going to get saved if I got the right word. Paul says, it wasn't in what I said and how I said it. It was in the power of his spirit that I had nothing to do with but to be obedient and go through the process where that thing going to operate when you get up. Not stump, holler, spit, loud. That don't make the spirit move. Yeah, the spirit was there. I don't know what emotional spirit you enter. That don't do nothing. The spirit is there when the Holy Ghost can come into place and start talking to people through you that don't know and you don't know nothing about them. And you see them delivered. Because mm -hmm. the fruit got to remain. And you got enough time to be there with them to see a change in their life. Because some people ain't changing in two, three years, five years. Some of y'all 20 years and you're just coming. You just beginning your eyes popping open to see. Don't happen like that. Now, you may be called to have to be there with them to see them change. Because somebody got to be there to be able to die, to teach, to share, to be an example before them. Everybody quiet now. I want to be a Roman evangelist. <laughs> That's what I said too. Yeah. I want to go here and do this and do that and do that and that. Then some of y'all would have been, been lost, been gone back to sin. Huh? See that? But that's, you see, what I just said changed the whole outlook on some people because I want to control my life. I want to direct what I want to do. I want to fulfill my dreams. Well, you don't belong to the Lord. You belong to you. Boy, this ain't popular. Oh, well, let it be. There's a process. 3.16 says, That it would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. In the inner man. In other words, that he might strengthen you in the inner man. See, the inner man is going to be the key to be able to continue. Now, Paul uh, was always a stickler on that he might finish the course, not just start. If you want it, starting always look good when you first start. I could tell you that for 40-some years. I know how that go. After three, four, five months, huh, then that's all. By the year, you're going to know what's going on. Always look good. Because you got to be able to endure to the end. See? So that uh, Rice Krispie teaching. Ain't going there, brother. 
you could just, it, it just, it just snap Papa and <laughs> cereal. That's cereal teaching. That's all that is. That's what you want. Go, go, go. Get your cereal teaching. Because you want cereal teaching. You don't understand this. This is devoted. You got to devote your life. See? I know, you know, I really, see, Facebook was a sin in a way. Because what it did, it makes pe people think they somebody just because they got likes. See, that's a modern day deception. Because them same people ain't going to like you if they got to interact with you, be around you. So it give a false perception of what's going on because that's not a true test of even fellowship even relationships see so you deceive a lot I know I'm talking to a generation like this and, and some of y'all may not be like it don't matter I, I'm addressing it do you understand that you know so many people get offended by just what I said they have offensive They're just offended by anything. Wow. That's how far you are. The love of God you need. Because if God was like that, you'd have been through. I'd have been through. See? You don't have the fruit. Now, did I read Ephesians right there? Yes, sir. 3 verse 16. Um, what my time is. Uh, I got 11 minutes toward the hour, right? Oh, I'm, I'm out? <laughs> I ain't even finished. <laughs> Got to close then. Got to close then. One more thought. Come on. If we're going to know an appropriate resurrection power to uh -huh. our lives today, we need to believe to have faith. Perhaps instead of asking where is the power of the church today, we should be asking where is the faith in the church today? Okay, we read that. Where's the trust, the faith that they're supposed to have in the church today? There's not many, and I have to close there, then the faith then that you really trust God. Do you really trust God? Huh? Are you, or what are you looking for? Well, Paul says, I, I didn't come with elegant speech, proper everything. I didn't come with that, he said. But we came with the power of the Word of God. That, what are you looking for? The power must change individuals from within. That they could be able to respond different. Now, I, I've taught motivating gift, and maybe I need to go back. It has nothing to do with your gifting. It has to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. How much have you surrendered yourself that he can use you. So the question is, what must I do to be completely surrendered to receive that power of the resurrection that has already been captured for you? He's already got that for you. You're supposed to be able to have the power of his spirit. Now, power to be able to teach as gifts, prophesy as a gift that he give. No, no, we're talking about power to live it. Power to overcome your emotions, your feelings, your fleshly mind, thoughts, how you think. That's what you're going to need power for. Power to love when the flesh say hate. Power to forgive, huh? But the flesh say never. I never going to like you. I never going to be able. You have sentenced yourself to hell. Talking about a Christian. I never going to do such and such and such. And I don't have time to go through them all. See, because the flesh adopt 
adjust to a certain way of responding. And that's how the flesh do all his life. I'm, I'm not, that's the way I am. When a person said that's the way they are, you, you need to be born again. Because you need to change from the way you are. Because if that's the way you were before you accept the Lord, and you still hold into that, you don't know something wrong. It didn't take much for me to get angry. You still like that? I, I, I just don't say I ain't going to do this and I ain't going to. What? He might call you to go that way. And you already have said, that's the way I am. But you ain't asking him to change you? You haven't got to have this conversation with the Lord that, Lord, however you want me to be. Not the way I am. Who? Understand up then. Still need some teaching then, maybe, or some waking up for you to be able to be like he wants you to be. Maybe, maybe not. But I, I pray that he would do whatever he got to do or you're going to wind up in hell for rejecting it. So that's what I pray. Because the word is dangerous to hear it and then don't do nothing with it. So I pray today that each one under the sound of my voice and even those that we speak into through streaming, that you would pray God's will be done in me. Lord, what you want to do with me. Simple prayer. Lord, help me because I am going to drift without you. I'm a drift. Praise team, come on, take your place. Well, I'm going to drift if I don't get this. Now, I don't think God just gave me this because this was another detour from trusting him, having faith in him. Because, see, without trusting him fully does you no good. You have to get to a place where, Lord, I surrender. My life. My thought life comes with that. Huh? The way I feel comes with that. They can't, they're not separate. You've got to get to a place, Lord, this is the way I feel, but I need strength from you. Because I know you know better than me, Lord. I'm not going with my way I feel. If I go where I feel, then I'd have to be gone somewhere. I ain't going where I feel. Feel ain't do you real good. I have to... But I don't get it unless I ask for it. Now, you can sit there all day, and you've always been a certain way, and you know, you ought to know, that wasn't right because I wasn't saved. I still think the same way. I still feel the same way. God, we need this altar full. You need deliverance. Because if you could sit there and say, that's the way I've always been. Oh, no. No, Lord, I need help. I need help in every area of my life. I need to learn how to respond. Now, if I had time, there's some deep areas, some personal stuff that you, that's how you live. In other words, you set in your ways now. And that's the way you react. That's the way you think. And you need to tell the truth. You are not born, you are not surrendered.